Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you guys. As always, declaring a very blessed and prosperous and healthy day, evening, and weekend over you and your family. All right, the title of today's message, Be Safe, question mark, or Be Brave. All right, ever since the, quote, pandemic started over two years ago, that's uh, the statement, Be Safe, has become a very popular statement, okay? And by all means, I'm not saying we shouldn't be safe. After all, I teach on God's divine protection all the time, all right? But if we just leave it at the statement of be safe or be careful, right? So much of the time I hear that statement and I see that that statement is more rooted in fear than it is faith. So really what I wanna to read to you here, especially as Christians, sons and daughters of God, we are called more to be brave than we are to be safe. By being brave, by taking time, by having courage, developing your faith in the word of God, developing your faith in divine protection and prosperity, we're supposed to be stepping out there each and every day and taking more and more ground for the kingdom of God, which in turn really is our what? It's our promised land, amen? So I wanna to talk to you today specifically about these statements, be safe, and looking to really convert that statement in all of our lives over to the statement of be brave, amen? So Father God, I just thank you. According to your word in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, you clearly said that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In 1 Peter chapter 5, you said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Actually, that's Philippians chapter 4 verses six and seven. In 1 Peter chapter five, you said, cast all of your care, turn it all over to me, all care, all anxiety, all worry. Father, for you care for us and you watch over us, Lord. So I just thank you for that now. I thank you for open hearts and open minds, open eyes and open ears. Father, greater revelation in this area of being strong and courageous and brave and each and every day taking more and more ground for the kingdom of God, for us, for our families, for our ministries, our workplaces, literally taking hold of the promised land, which you've already given us, but you said for us to go in and possess. So I thank you for it now, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so we're gonna read today out of Joshua chapter one. All right, and once again, be safe or be brave. And once again, I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be safe. I'll say it again. Psalm 91, I teach on it all the time. The power of God's divine protection to keep you and your family safe at all times. But that should not be the priority. The priority, first and foremost, should be for us to be brave, to be strong and courageous. But that only is going to come as we develop our faith specifically in what God has said. We hear his voice. We get his orders and we go forth to do the work that he has called us to do, okay? I just see so much of the time, not everybody, but a lot of people within the body of Christ have kind of just sat on the sidelines. They've been hidden away and really were a sleeping giant. And I believe now, especially in these times, that that sleeping giant has been awakened. But ultimately, we should be part of that sleeping giant, the body of Christ in this earth that is now awakened to go forth and do the work that God has called us to do so that we can set the stage, we can prepare the atmosphere for the second coming of Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe as always that we're closer now than we've ever been before. Amen. So the statement, be safe or be brave. And as I prayed, I quoted two, three scriptures. I said, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, the spirit of God himself is activated, operating in and through you, spirit, soul, and body. First and foremost, rather than being safe, you're gonna be brave, you're gonna be strong, and you're gonna be courageous, amen? Philippians chapter four, all right, verses six and seven. Many versions talk, don't worry about anything, be anxious for nothing. One version says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Go after it in faith believing, right? You shall have it, amen, that says go, take it in the name of Jesus. And then 1 Peter chapter five, where he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you, 
doing what? Casting the whole of your care. So when I hear that statement, be careful, right? Be careful. And it's not to say that we're not cautious. I taught on this yesterday, discernment, to recognize, hey, if I'm about ready to go into a dangerous situation, I'm going to think about that and I'm going to have discernment and I'm going to be cautious as to where I go and what I do. And we should, be, we should do that all the time because right in there in 1 Peter chapter 5 in the 8th verse, what did he tell us to do? Be vigilant at all times. But that doesn't mean hide away and run, run away and hide in a corner and not do anything, okay? We need to be out there on the front lines. We need to be connected to a strong body where we find that support with like-minded believers, amen? And we need to get over the spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. So if you're in a place of fear or worry or anxiety, that is a telltale sign that you are not taking your time to develop the faith of Jesus Christ. That's a telltale sign that you are not spending time in the Word of God developing your faith. Amen? And the Bible says, what about love? Growing, developing love. The more I get rooted and grounded in love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, what happens? Rooted and grounded in love. Growing, developing love does what? Casts out fear. Amen? So let's take a look here. Joshua chapter 1. We will read nine, I think it's like nine verses out of the Amplified Classic. Now, once again, in, we're talking Old Testament. Children of Israel had come out of the land of not enough, Egypt. They were in the land of just enough, the wilderness. And I'm telling you right now, if your whole motto, your whole life is just be safe, be safe, be safe, and not be brave, as a born-again child of God, you will never enter into that promised land. You will never possess that promised land that God has already given you. Because if my motto is always just be safe, be safe, then I'll always just stay in the wilderness with just enough, okay? And, and some people would say, well, just enough is fine for me. But that with God, he's saying, no, that's not enough because now it's not just about you, just like Joshua, we're gonna read here, so that you have more than enough, so now that you can help other people enter into that promised land. Yes, you have a very real enemy that's out there. You have very real circumstances in this world system that when really thought about, and if you meditate on it enough, it can definitely scare you. But that's the whole point of what he's saying to Joshua, don't be conformed to this world. Meditate on my word, have your mind continually renewed so that you're transformed and you might prove for yourself what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. Well, in order to do that, you're gonna have to be brave, you're gonna have to be strong, and you're gonna have to be courageous if you really wanna walk in the fullness of God's divine purpose for your life, your promised land. Amen? Let's go. Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 1. After the death of Moses, now remember, they're in the wilderness. They're preparing to go into the promised land. God had already given it to them. He said, you go in and you possess it. Here's the instructions. Here's how you do it. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead, so now arise and take his place. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place, ready? Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and of the great sea of the west shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And I want to back up here to that third verse. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that I have given to you. You know, every night in my neighborhood, every time when I go to work, every time where I'm walking, no matter where I'm at, especially in my sphere of influence, I stand on this verse and say, Lord, every single place that I have placed my foot, You've given me the authority. You've given me the authority to bring forth the manifestation of the kingdom of God into this family, into this neighborhood, into this workplace, wherever I'm at. I stand on that at all times. And I love what he says, verse five, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. But if my whole motto, my whole life is, I'm just gonna be safe, right? And I'm not gonna step out and be brave and courageous. I'll never be able to do this. Verse six, be strong and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So you see, it wasn't just about him. God was using him to do what? 
to cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And I have found, once again, and I'll say this because I didn't grow up with church, within the body of Christ, you start to talk to people about the exceeding great precious promises of God, you start to talk to them about divine prosperity and taking hold of their promised land, they'll, a lot of people will run away from you. Oh, that's not for me, I don't wanna do that, right? The whole point of us getting into this promised land here, which in the New Testament, which is based on better promises, is that so yeah, that you're entering in and now you're helping the people inherit the land which you swore to their fathers to give them. Only, verse seven, only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Most important statement, here's what he said. Verse eight, this book of the law or the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you'll make your way prosperous, then you'll deal wisely and have good success. If you're not doing that, then you will always be in a place of just trying to what? Be safe, not be brave. Verse nine, have I not commanded you, be strong, vigorous and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Right? Follow this along. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time. I read you 1 through 9, 10 through 18. He then talks about Joshua going in, possessing the land, coming back, getting his brothers and sisters, bringing them in. So he even goes in first to deal with what has to be dealt with. Then he goes in, gets them, helps them enter into their rest. But in order to do that, he had to help them come in and also possess that land. And if their goal, if their, 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 their thought process is in this whole matter of life, we're just going to spend our whole life trying to be safe and not be brave and strong and courageous, which comes by meditating on the word of God, developing the faith of Jesus Christ within you. That faith works by love and that growing, developing love does what? It casts out the fear. It cast out the worry and the anxiety, right? And once again, the, with that, the byproduct of what we're talking about is divine protection. He said, I will keep you safe. I will protect you all the days of your life. What's it conditional upon? Putting your trust in him, putting your trust in his word. Faith without works is dead. If I believe the word, I'm gonna act on the word and I trust you, God, because right now what I'm about to do in the natural, boy, it sure does seem risky but I've sought your wisdom and instruction. I know I have a word from you and I am willing to step out in faith because I am brave, I am strong and courageous. And in the midst of this, what will you do? You'll keep me safe. You'll keep me protected, amen? And that I believe with all my heart from what I'm seeing out here, there are so many more people and I believe who's ever listening right now, this word is for you. You need to be more involved in the specific commission of the gospel. You need to be more involved in the works of the body of Christ to go out and possess the promised land that God has already given you, right? And do what? Be a manifestation of Christ Jesus in this earth. The kingdom of God is within you, right? So as Christ Jesus is manifesting in and through you, what are you doing? The kingdom of God is manifesting in and through you in this earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be strong, be courageous, and know that God has called you to literally create the conditions of the Garden of Eden in this earth wherever you're at, over and through your sphere of influence and everybody that's around you, amen? So examine, look closely, say, Lord, am I walking in fear? If I make that statement, I tell other people, be safe, be safe, right? What am I really saying to them? Am I saying be safe, but be strong and courageous and go out and deal with what needs to be dealt? Or when I say be safe, am I saying just go and hide in the corner till everything's over? Because we can't do that. Times right now, you hear me talk about it all the time, more and more in this world system, things are heating up. They're heating up more and more and more every day. And we are called to do exactly what he said to do. Remember, this promised land that Joshua was going into, right? It was no cakewalk in the natural. There were giants, fortified walls, great weapon, great weaponry, right? From that the enemy had, and the majority of all the people had said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do this. So it was not the majority that went in. It was the minority, but they went in and did what God said to do, and ultimately they took the land. And I'll close with this. Read Joshua chapter 14. Caleb, right? Caleb gets to the point where he sees the, probably the most difficult area of the promised land. It's the mountain where the giants of Anak lived. And he went to Joshua, and he said, it's been 40 years, 
I'm stronger now than I was all the way back then. Give me the mountain. I'm going in and I'm taking it. And Joshua said, go ahead. And he took it and it was his. And that's the story. So Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your help, your wisdom and instruction, your strength and your courage at all times. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good night.